to graph these numbers. And then, again, you're going to have some time, and you can knock out as many of these as you can. And then tomorrow, I'll give you a double homework check on, um, on all of them. Okay? Now, uh, the sine wave. It looks like it's just a bunch of numbers, but you're going to find out tomorrow through a little video I show you that these aren't just a bunch of numbers. Remember that they actually are points on the unit circle. Each one of these decimals represents a value on the unit circle. The interesting thing is when you start to graph them, you don't get a circle. You don't get a circle because you're not graphing in a circular manner. You're actually graphing like you always do, X and Y. And so look at the x-axis, or excuse me, look at the x-values. This might seem kind of simple, but it's important to notice right away. The x-values are angles. And then again, the y-values, well, those are these points on the unit circle. So you're actually graphing angles and again, uh, points from the unit circle. So to help you do that, we have a scale that we use where the x-axis is going to go by 30 degrees, and then the y-axis is going to go by 0.1. This is just a nice scale to help us to be able to fit these numbers onto an x and y-axis. And I just want to help you do that. Some of this, um, you just need a little bit of a, a starter from the teacher, and then you're ready to rock and roll and draw your graph. So uh, what I like to do is I like to kind of mark every 90 degrees on my x-axis. Um, it kind of gives me some little checkpoints. I don't think I'm going to write each of these numbers every time, but just so you know, when I put these little hash marks on here, they represent, again, another 90 degrees. Okay, so we're just marking some of these little checkpoints to give us some references when we start graphing these points. If you want to write those numbers, you can, or just realize that they each are another 90 degrees. Now, the y-axis goes by 0.1. Um, it's kind of up to you if you want to put any marks on here. Uh, honestly, for me, I will mark halfway. I'm going to mark 0.5, again, just to give me a little bit of a reference. And then it's time to just start plotting some points and really just being careful as you plot them. You can even plot the decimals. Sometimes you'll be like between a box. In fact, 15 degrees is actually between the first two lines. 15 degrees is going to be kind of a halfway spot. And 0.26 is also kind of halfway. So I'm just going to put on kind of the first three or four points in blue. You're welcome to look up here. I know it's a lot of, to, of lines to look at, but maybe you just want to compare to make sure that you're not missing one of your X values. Again, every other point, because we're going by 15 degrees, would definitely be between the lines. I'm sure you've noticed that these numbers definitely have a pattern, okay? Indeed, they definitely have a pattern. And what we're doing is we're basically checking what that pattern looks like when you graph it. And ultimately, it's going to look like what we call the sine wave. It's going to be the sine wave. Okay, now these points that I plotted... 
that was just the first 90 degrees and you don't necessarily need my permission to keep going. So keep going. And please feel free to reference my blue dots. Hoping that yours looks similar. Okay, you're trying to get as close as you can. When you're ready to take the plunge, you're going to start graphing the negative y values. You're going to graph negative y values as you go from 195 the rest of the way to 360. Now, once you have all your points plotted, you ultimately connect the dots. Because remember that the, the graph is not just all these dots, but the graph is actually the line that connects the dots. And when you do connect the dots, it's just a nice smooth curve. And that nice smooth curve is called the sine wave. You guys are doing a nice job. I realize that sometimes this can be a little tedious and you might need to take a break so you don't get a headache or get lost in the points, but you're actually making for yourself a resource of the six trig graphs. Okay, and again, you're probably going to look back at this resource more than once. By the way, we are not going to do all six of these with the teacher. I'm actually going to do the sine wave with you. And just to kind of make sure that you get the idea, you connect the dots with a nice smooth curve. So ultimately that line is what we seek. That line is called the sine wave. Tomorrow we're going to learn a little bit more about some stuff about this graph, but I just want to tell you today that this type of graph is periodic. It's periodic because it will repeat itself. In other words, if we would graph another 360 degrees, we would end up with the same graph again. So what you're looking at right here is known as one period. It is the amount of time it takes to see a full cycle. All of these vocabulary words we'll be looking at more tomorrow, but again, you guys are looking at one period of a sine wave, which is 360 degrees. Okay, there's some other things that are true about this sine wave. I just want you to listen to it. You don't have to write anything down, but it has an amplitude. An amplitude is essentially how high and how low the sine wave goes. And you can probably see that the sine wave goes as high as 1 and as low as negative 1. And that means that this graph has an amplitude of 1. And these black arrows are trying to show you that distance. Again, an amplitude is how high and how low the graph can go. 
Okay, just some vocabulary words that we'll get into tomorrow, but it doesn't hurt to hear them today. That's the sine wave. You will get to know it. Lots and lots of stuff we will do with the sine wave. Now, I'm going to skip down to tangent. I realize some of you are working on cosine. I would encourage you to stop, but we're going to shift down to tangent. There's something about it that's a little different. And basically, you'll be glad that you spent a few minutes looking at the tangent with me because then you'll be able to figure out the rest of these again on your own. Now, if you didn't fill out anything in the tangent table, maybe check out a few of the numbers on your calculator. Like I said, there's something different. Okay, it happens right away, doesn't it? When you type in the tangent of negative 90, you end up with an error. We'll talk about that on the graph in just a moment. But I can do the tangent of negative 75. Yes, it's kind of a different looking decimal. That's because tangent is a different kind of function. Remember, tangent is y over x. It's actually two numbers on the unit circle divided. And so we end up with these types of decimals. Now, when it comes to filling out your chart, the the uh, error actually implies that negative 90 is undefined. And we actually would have talked about that back in the first few weeks of school because ultimately you can't do the tangent of negative 90. You would be dividing by zero. You can do the tangent of some of these other angles. And so just like before, You basically just have to plug and chug to get these values. Feel free to compare your numbers with mine. There is a pattern to these numbers also. If you feel like you're catching on to the pattern, you might be able to save a little time and not punch every number in your calculator. There is a pattern as the numbers ultimately just become the positive version. Now we'll talk a little more tomorrow, but really these numbers you're getting are still coming from the unit circle. If you're at 60 degrees, you're going to have a positive number from the unit circle. Once you get back to 90 degrees, you're going to have another no-no. You're going to have undefined. Now, I want you to notice that the second column ends up being the same numbers. If you feel like you want to write them all down again, write them down. If you just want to say that they're the same, I'm giving you permission to do that, but you need to understand one way or the other that those numbers in the second column, the Y values, all end up to be the same. Now, when it comes to graphing tangent, a little different scale uh, can be helpful, a little different. Okay, the x-axis, and you'll get to know this, still goes by 30 degrees. Uh, in other words, the x-axis still represents angles. Okay, so we can mark a couple of these spots. This would be like negative 90. This here would be positive 90, 180. So the x-axis is kind of in a, a different scale. The y-axis, so that we can fit these numbers on, we're going to suggest that each line is, uh, is valued at a half. Each line is valued at a half. And so sometimes it is helpful uh, to mark um, 
if you want, it's just whatever you kind of want to do that you could say that every other line then would be one, two, three, etc. Go ahead, Brandon. Well, that's, that's uh, exactly where we want to be. Yes, you don't plot anything, but you still show something. And this might go back a little bit to algebra class, but you guys know on just a basic algebra graph, what shows up when you have an undefined value. Again, this goes back to algebra. It might have been when you were at home in March and April. Anna? And I'll add a word to that straight vertical asymptote, an asymptote. Do you remember, guys, asymptotes, as Anna said, are often straight, and they often are vertical, but they're always a line that you can't touch. An asymptote is a line that you can't touch. And so it's a great question, Brandon, and that's really why we're going over this together, that when you have undefined, you're going to make an asymptote. Now, I want you to see how these points kind of fit around the asymptotes. And you just got to do some of the concentration here and just concentrate a little bit and plot these points. But you can look up here, and I'll show you about where each point would be on my graph. The scale is a little different, folks. So. Pay attention to where the decimals would go. They appear to be spread out and then get very close together as you go 45 degrees, excuse me, negative 45 degrees all the way back to zero. You end up with them starting to feel like they're squeezing together. You kind of get these points that look like they're in like a little S curve, a little curve. This is called the tangent wave, and I want to connect the dots for you. That's why we're doing this together. If you connect the dots, especially with the asymptotes, you end up with this graph that curves and then seems to shoot straight up or straight down. Now, that's because it's not able to get to that asymptote. It's just going to keep going up, 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 or down, down, down to infinity or negative infinity. And again, we get what's called a tangent wave. Okay, again, this is the tangent. We'll talk about it more tomorrow, but I just want you to hear it today. This graph, this tangent wave that I, we created has, is periodic. Periodic means that it repeats itself. In fact, it's going to repeat itself in the next 90 degrees. What that means is that you could draw another of these tangent waves in the next 90 degrees, including another asymptote, 
excuse me, I said 90 degrees, but I meant 180 degrees. That's my fault if you were listening. It's another 180 degrees where we're going to end up with another one of these tangent waves. Okay, that's because the period of a tangent wave is actually only 180 degrees. And that's why that table of values that we marked as the same is going to end up plotting an, the same exact points. It's going to end up plotting the same exact points and, of course, giving us a graph that looks exactly the same. Now, what I just did right there, I would give you permission to do. That is, I actually drew that graph without plotting all the points. But be careful, okay, because as you get into some of the other graphs, you have to make sure you're sure. You have to make sure you're sure where the points are going to be. And I don't want you to think that every graph is going to end up with just a duplicate. It's actually just special here for tangent. Most students will take their time, find these points, plot the points, and then draw the graphs. Some of the other graphs will have asymptotes. Okay, I know it's kind of new to you, but this is a good way to learn just to, to explore on your own. So there's going to be some asymptotes. There's one more thing I want to show you. I know you're doing some other things. That's fine. I'm, I, I get it that you're using your time wisely. Eventually, you're going to try to do the secant graph. Um, I'm skipping over to the back and just choosing the secant graph, which happens to be in the middle. Remember how to do secant on your calculator. Okay, you have to do 1 divided by cosine. Again, when you do secant on your calculator, you have to do 1 divided by cosine. Now, you actually get an error for the first one. Yeah, you get an error for negative 90, so you can actually put an undefined symbol in there. But you do get some values as you do some of the uh, subsequent angles. So again, when you get to secant, and quite frankly, all the ones on the back of the paper are going to use reciprocals. Okay, so make sure you're comfortable typing that in your calculator. Thoughts? Do you guys have any thoughts here? There's a couple minutes, not, I guess there's a minute or two, if you wanted to ask me something or ask a neighbor about those five thinkers. Just don't forget those five thinkers are due tomorrow. If you happen to be done with them today, you can drop it off before you leave. Otherwise, you'll, you'd want to have that for tomorrow. And then take a little bit of time and work through these six graphs. It's kind of mindless. You're just finding these numbers. But I'm going to give you a double homework check tomorrow to hopefully encourage you to work through these six graphs.